Okay, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, could you please join me in saluting the flag? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we start our meeting uh, with the hearing of visitors and I've been informed that no one has signed up so we will move on to the next item which is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is routine business with respect to um, items that need to be ratified and voted in by the school committee. Uh, at this time are there any items that any individual school committee members would like removed so for further discussion? Mrs. Joyce. I'd like to remove item D please. Great, thank you. Item D. Anyone else? Okay. Oh, can I have a motion to approve all items listed, excluding item D? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Wonderful. Okay, Mrs. Joyce, item D, approval item D. of Pluff School Overnight Trip. I just had a couple of questions. If we have some representatives from the Pluff School available? I know we do. I'm sure we do. Miss Nezrella and your team. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. As usual, nice to see you, Ms. Nezrella. Thank you, Mr. Minicello. Same here, Superintendent Smith. You do have a jingle bell on. I thought I had to feel the holiday I spirit. do, absolutely. <laughs> Never lose my jingle. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Okay. Um, Mrs. Joyce, would you like to ask your question? Or Certainly. Questions? I actually have a comment and then um, a question, of course. Um, I'm, I'm so pleased that things went so well last year and that your kid, the kids had a great trip and they learned a lot. And thank you for all of the um, responses that you gave us, the, the um, postcards and everything, because that was really very nice of the kids and we really appreciated knowing how well it went. Um, I did notice that you changed the times. We that you're leaving and you're learning as you're going and that's, that's, that's fantastic and you're taking the lessons you learned from last year and putting them forth this year because this year you're looking to leave the morning of Friday uh, the 13th of June and coming back Sunday evening. Um, do you early Sunday evening, 6, 7, something and like about that? The time by 6, 6.30 p.m. Okay, so they can go to school the next day. So really they're only losing Friday. That's correct. And that's great. That's perfect. I, I think you. that timing is much better for everyone. We talked mm -hmm. about that and yeah, yeah. we agree. That was <laughs> I was really <laughs> thrilled to hear about that. Um, I did um, wanted to ask. I wanted to ask a little bit about the fundraising because you're still using World Strides uh, fundraising opportunities where they're asking family members and things like that. But we had talked a little bit about expanding on that and offering other ways to fundraise so they're not hitting up family members, you know, year after year, and you know, some families just don't have the resources. So can you expand a little bit as to what are the new fundraising opportunities that you're looking at? I've spoken with Karen Watts, our grants um, <coughs> coordinator for Brockton Public Schools, and she's exploring grants and fundraising activities that we could take advantage of, absolutely. And I know that Mrs. McFarland and Ms. Darling have um, also found a fundraising technique, if you could explain, please, Mrs. McCann. Um, I spoke with um, the music and the band teacher from our school, and they told me about a fundraiser that they did um, to fund their trip to Six Flags. It's just, it's a simple um, fundraiser where they have these scratch-off tickets, and people scratch off the the item and they donate what they scratch off and speaking with the music teacher oh. she said it was very it was yeah. simple but it was very um, profitable yeah. okay, so we, we talked about doing that as well okay I like those additional ideas that's great because I think it opens up the opportunities to kids that don't have people to go to at home to you know to fund their uh, their trip so that's really great and um, any ideas on what you're doing about chaperones this year are you changing it all are there different chaperones pretty much the same people going as last year how is that how is that playing out this year well I know that the original four mm -hmm. Ms. Um, Lobo, Mrs. McFarlane, Ms. Walsh and Ms. Darling will be chaperoning okay Mr. Westcott as well mm -hmm. and um, we'll look at other staff members to see um, who's interested 
Okay. If you don't have staff members that are interested, what would be like plan B? No, we have plenty of staff members who are interested. Okay, so that won't, no, you won't, it won't need to go to plan B. going outside of the building. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Well, this is good. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing Thank about the, the, how the new oh, trip we'll goes. Have a new PowerPoint. <laughs> Ready that would be great. Everything. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Any other questions? I'm also. Mr. Sullivan, Sullivan. Just one quick one. Please. Was there any complaints last year? Did anybody not like the trip? Oh, no, our students <laughs> had a wonderful time. In fact, just, you know, per chance, we have three students here who went on the trip. They're, ten, they're in the audience. They're in high school now. Ninth grade. Ninth yep. grade, and um, I believe they had a wonderful time. No, I, I, mean, I got the same. Yes. I got the postcards and everything else. Yes, too. no, they all really had a nice. great time. Thank you for asking. I was just wondering. Yeah, no, they had a wonderful time. And I'd like to make a motion to accept the as written. Someone needs a second. All seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? Done, Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Um, Ms. Nisrella, are you also going to have a nurse on the trip like you did last time? Yes. Okay, that's great. Absolutely. Um, um, I just thought the last trip went so well. I really enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation. I think that it's a great learning experience. You're giving kids enough notice to try and, you know, obviously take opportunities to fundraise. Um, you know, the holidays are coming. I'd rather, if I wanted to go on a trip, say I'd rather have a sort of money to put on the trip rather than get me another sweater or whatever. Um, and certainly with the winter coming, you know, kids maybe can shovel, help out, do leaves right now. I mean, kids today have got to learn how to um, earn some money on their own just like all of us in this room did. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I'm not saying that you're going to earn all of it that way, but we all know what it was like to, you know, mow lawns, rake leaves, shovel driveways, babysit, you know, do the things for neighbors, whatever. So I, I think that students need to learn that work ethic. I know they, they have the ability, and I know some of them certainly do, but um, there's plenty of time to try and take advantage of all the different ways to earn money to, to if they really would like to go. So um, that's all I have to say. Mr. Sullivan, on Mr. Sullivan's motion, all in favor? Any opposed? Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, communications. Superintendent Smith. Okay. Uh, I'd like to start with the report uh, of Jessica Freeborn from uh, Brockton High School, our student representative. Okay. Well, lately at Brockton High, 286 John and Abigail Adams scholarships were awarded last Thursday. It was a really nice presentation. Um, the drumline performed and it was really nice. Um, drama presents Learn Me Something this Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 6 p.m. in the Little Theater at Brockton High. And I heard it's going to be fabulous. Um, the Christmas concert this year is December 17th and 18th and being in the band it's going to be something to see. Um, the senior class is sponsoring Charlie Brown Christmas Tree, where students and staff purchase get, um, gifts for needy families in Brockton. Um, the tree's in the main office, and it's a really nice thing to do. Um, SATs are going to be administered Saturday, December 7th, and winter sports tryouts are going on this week in the gym. And that's what's happening in Brockton High. Jessica, could you give the times again for the weekend uh, production, for drama um, sure. production? Um, on Friday and Saturday, it's at 7 p.m. And on Sunday, it's at 6 p.m. And they're all in the Little Theater. Great. And I would have to say, um, I also took part in the awarding of the uh, scholarships to the John and Abigail Adams uh, scholars. And uh, we had a guest speaker, uh, Dr. Dana Molafaria from Bridgewater State University, uh, Principal Wolder, and her staff did, again, an excellent job. The drum line was... Oh, it was fabulous. It was. It, it was really something to see. Uh, to just a lot of excitement. And I think the thing that was most impressive, when you saw the older students, and you brought in, I believe, the sophomore that will be taking mm -hmm. the MCAS test this spring and for them to actually witness you know their peers receiving the scholarships and being excited about the opportunities that lie ahead for them so congratulations uh, to our Brockton High students and our staff and and once again to the parents that support these children oh, thanks Jess next Questions? item next item uh, I'd like to have uh, 
Mrs. Soraya DeBarros come up and she's going to do a presentation this evening uh, on the Parent Information Center and the uh, school assignments that uh, took place from pre-K to 12 uh, this past year. Do we need to leave? Yeah, I think we do. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Good. It's, um, it's my pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, I have great numbers to show you. And uh, if you have any, any question, any information, please uh, feel free to ask us um, at the end of the presentation, okay? Tonight, I would like to highlight um, the 2013 Spring and Summer Registration Report that you have in your hands and to answer any questions that you may have rega regarding the information presented. This presentation is the product of endless hours, a lot of work that we have put in into this, um, and it's, uh, that has been carried out by a group of dedicated and a very hardworking team made up of the School Registration and Parent Information Center staff, the bilingual community facilitators, parent liaisons, and personnel, and school personnel, the administrative assistants, principals, and everyone else involved in the schools. I would like to take this opportunity to publicly commend my staff for a job well done, a staff that is very diligent, cooperative, that re reflects the diversity of the city of Brockton, and who are all the more competent due to their professional capacities, and also because of their ability to speak, read, read and write fluently in different languages. This way, making sure that the services are more efficient for parents, and that students who often find comfort and confidence when they step into Serpic to make their very first contact with the Brockton Public Schools. I have a list of people that um, are being acknowledged at this time, but I would also like to acknowledge Mr. John Jerome for all the help he has given me throughout the years. He has been my support and a supporter and a, my mentor, and I always run to him when I need questions answered. And right here by my side, Mr. Michael Thomas, who has been a great supporter as well. Um, he always has the answers to the questions I ask, so thank you very much. And also Mr. Jose Pinedo, who's not here, but he's the director of bilingual and ESL services, and he has been of a tremendous help to all of us at the school registration office. Um, we have made a lot of changes and innovations at the school registration office. Feel free to stop by anytime and come and visit. The place looks beautiful. We just put the Christmas tree up today, so it looks even better. Um, but Serpic is the first contact that parents have when they come to our city. We are the gateway to Brockton Public Schools, and we are very proud of it. We give a lot of information out to parents, information in regards to the city, in regards to the services that they can find in the city, and to the public in general. We also do pre-K through 12 grade um, registrations and transfers, and also all the address changes and everything that involves the school, people go to us and they call us. They, I guess they know our numbers by heart already. Um, we have many responsibilities, and I guess the responsibilities are getting even more demanding and far-reaching. Um, we just not only register students, we transfer students, we do lunch applications, we verify that they're enrolled in school. We we contact different services in Brockton. We have the appeal system as well, that when parents don't get the seat that they want, then they can appeal it. We also deal with transportation and we disseminate information about Brockton and about our Brockton schools. This year we have made a lot of different, a lot of changes um, that I'm very proud of. We have a permanent ESL teacher which has helped tremendously to make sure that the, um, the information is accurate. Whenever students come in, they have to be, um, the home language survey has to be done and then the students are assessed as well right there. So by the time they get to a school, students have a bilingual folder or they have the bilingual assessment. So we place them where they're supposed to be placed. Um, items two and three, we um, are going electronic th this year, electronic this year. We have registration forms that are electronic, very easy to read and easy to do and very legible at the same time. And we also ha have made the um, registration forms for the bilingual students and you can see them down there. It 
it filters down all the information so we're not repetitive and we save time. So parents spend an average of 30 minutes at the center from point zero to point 100 to do everything they have to do. Um, we also have a kiosk system right there. Um, it's an electronic tablet queuing system. Parents come in, they sign in, and from there we know exactly what they need. And if they need help in any language, it will ask them what language they speak so that people that speak that language will come and it will help them. Um, we also have a survey that we have implemented to we're a customer service department, so we want to make sure that the service that we give to parents is well delivered and that parents accept it well. And we also take suggestions and, and comments from parents to make sure that our service gets better. Starting in January, January of, two, of 2014, we are going to start taking pictures of students whenever they come in to register. So this way will also help with the safety of the students. And whenever students are put into the Infinite Campus, our database, their picture will be already there. So whenever they go to a school, the principals will know who to look for and how the student looks like. Because from what the system that we have, have now, it takes a few months for that to be uploaded. But by doing it at the Parent Registration Center, all we have to do, it just takes a few minutes for the picture to be uploaded. And the last initiative that we have there for now is to go paperless. So we have been scanning and um, all the information that we have, putting it into our drive so that we have easy access to it and it can also be sent through email to, um, to schools if they need to. So this way we'll also save on space. And Mr. Thomas knows about it. I'm also complaining about the lack of space. Um, the, the, these are the highlights of the report that you have in front of you. Um, this summer we had I call them transactions, 5,166 pre-K through grade 12 registrations and transfers. That's a lot of transfers and registrations. Uh, we have 34 more than we had last year at this time. And out of those, 4,054 are minority students and 1,112 are non-minority students. Of all of those registrations, the 5,166, 2,902 are students who are new or they're returning to us from different school districts. And 2,264, or 43%, those are students that transferred within the system, that uh, received administrative transfers, that moved within the system. We do see a lot of moving within the system from one zone to the other, or students that were mainstreamed, for example, from the bilingual department, or from the sp special ed program as well. Students get mainstreamed. So all of those, they go through the school registration office. Right. Yes. With respect to the um, uh, third bullet, when you say 78 uh, percent were minority and 22 non-minority, can you just give us a little background? Uh, are these students coming from other countries? Are they coming from other cities? Are they coming from other school districts locally, out of state? Oh, voila. <laughs> there you go. Voila. Um, where are students? Our students are c coming from everywhere. And this list is a list of the 10 most Okay, so um, for example, if you look at the out of the city, we have students coming from Boston neighborhoods, okay? We have more than 100 students that registered for this school year coming from Boston. Um, the second one is the Randolph, Taunton, and so forth and so on, and you can see all surrounding, um, surrounding cities. Then out of state, we had 43 students that came from Florida. And the next one is New York, and uh, we also got a few from Puerto Rico being a territory. Out of country, I have to say, we K Verdians, we love Brockton. Okay, so we're coming to Brockton, and um, and you'll see the numbers later on of how many K Verdians we have registered coming from Brockton, and they keep on coming. Just today, we had three, three new registrations. Um, again, going down the list: Haiti, Ecuador, um, Portugal, and so forth and so on. These are the places where our students are coming from. Okay. come with um, 
um, records that would reflect special education um, backgrounds or very limited very okay. few of them come with records that show that they um, were placed in a special ed program in the city or country from where they're coming from um, but most of them come with school records with um, a certificate of schooling so that way it helps us to place them correctly where they're supposed to to be however I have to tell you that um, a few students have come with no paperwork whatsoever and with very limited formal schooling and in those cases that that poses a problem to the schools and um, to where we place them but luckily in Brockton we have the programs to service them so we send them to the high school and Miss Annika Hedo here who was in charge of the uh, Cave Ride and Bilingual students here she knows exactly where to place them but we have had a few of those students okay and the guidance office said the high school also does a good job of placing the other students okay so if you have a student that comes in that's new and let's just say gets placed over at the, the Brookfield for example and um, there's sort of limited records um, the teacher now obviously maybe after a, a week or two is observing some you know learning issues how do what is the process I guess by which that student would have um, interaction with either special ed or the ELL department or um, you know to, to get placed in the right spot you know just placing that student in sort of a general ed class because of the lack of records might be the first step but what would then have how does the system of the process work when the teacher has the time to observe and say hey wait a minute I think there's some things that we need to be aware of with the student. I have to tell you, I'm very lucky that, again, that I work for the city of Brockton because we have a system in place. And I've seen a couple of uh, principals here that can attest to that. What happens is that when, for example, we place students in grade three and they're not working in the grade three level, what happens at the school, the teachers right away, they notice that that child needs help. So the teacher brings it up to the team or to the principal and then um, usually the principal will call me and say Soraya we have this child who does not belong in grade three what should we do and I usually ask them what do you recommend do you recommend the child going being assessed or going back to grade two so that the child can get more services at the level so by doing this by meeting we, we talk about it and they also include a special ed department and they also include the bilingual office to see if it's a disability problem or if it's also a language problem and there's a fine line between special ed and bilingual sometimes okay so all services and departments get involved to make sure that the child is placed correctly we just had a case at the Raymond school less than a month ago and um, the parent liaison the community facilitator got involved the parent was asked to come to the school and have a meeting and everything was done to benefit the child for the advantage of the child so again here in Brockton we put children first can you talk about the tests and that goes on before they go out to the school yes we also test at the school registration office um, when every parent that comes in has to have a home language survey done so the home language survey is a set of questions that ask um, asks parents what language they speak at home what language the children first started to speak what language is spoken to the children what language the children speak when talking to each other and so forth and so on based on that if the child speaks more than one language right away we test the child to make sure that the child is fluent in English if the child is fluent in English then he or she gets mainstreamed if the child is not fluent then we enroll with the parents consent uh, we enroll the child in the sheltered English immersion program for grades K through 5 and for grades 6 through 12 in the transitional bilingual program or sheltered English in instruction as well okay so everything again is done at the parent center now there has been a few cases where um, the child was sent to grade three because that's when we thought or where we thought that the child will be best placed but we had a few calls from principals saying we don't think the child belongs in grade three so and we work it out does anyone else on the committee have a question at this time no okay great thank you going back um how do we assign students we follow school committee policy 
the guidelines that were set forth in 2008. The first one being complete and timely registration. So we have a deadline and we stick to the deadline to make sure that students are placed and that our process is fair and transparent. Um, Number two is seat availability. If we have seats available at a certain school, we'll place the students. If we don't have seats, then we'll place the student. We'll try to, to give the parent the first choice of school. If we can't, then we'll go to number two and number three. And if we can't do any of those choices, we'll just have to assign a child to the school where we have seats. Um, number three, sibling preference. Number four, proximity to school, and number five, racial fairness um, guidelines in Brockton. And if you see the picture down below, is one of my favorites. This was my office during the summer. And all of those crates, those are the little ones that we have in kindergarten now. 1,500 of them. We put, we put the folders in crates. But we call them our babies, our babies right there. <laughs> Um, that was a good one. <laughs> Kindergarten registration advertisement. We, we have done a lot to make sure that parents know that we register students and when we register so that they can stick to the deadline because we, we have deadlines that we have to to honor. So these are things that we have done. Uh, I, I will not go through all of them, but um, I'll point to the kindergarten showcase this year. With the help of the Office of um, Learning and Teaching, we put four, uh, four kindergarten showcases. And we only did four because we were just starting last year with this. And we did it by the zone. Since we have four zones in our district, we decided to do it by zones. And I have to tell you, we had, we had more than 400 parents attending those showcases. And again, the kindergarten registration was a success because of that as well. Parents knew they did their homework before coming to us, so that helped us tremendously. Um, we also went to um, TV. We did TV and radio programs. Um, if you see some of them, you'll probably won't be able to read some of them. But those are um, programs also in Portuguese, in Cape Verdean Creole, and in Haitian that we, we try to, to service all all the different communities in Brockton, okay? Um, kindergarten, from the crates to the graph, right here. We uh, register right now in our schools, we have 1,485 students in kindergarten. But we also register 105 more that did not show or that just left the system, okay? So these are the numbers that we have um, that were registered from February all the way to November 1st. We have 1,132 students in general education classrooms, 218 in SCI or Sheltered English Immersion Bilingual, 86 in SPED, and then 49 in the two-way program. As you can see, this is the billboard that we had by Brockton High School for a couple of weeks. These are the results of the kindergarten registration. Um, I'm very proud of this. What, about 1,200 parents got their first choice of school, okay? And uh, the blue one is the minority, and the um, red part is the non-minority students. And you can see that 100 some students got their second choice, third choice, Okay, and then these were the ones that were assigned. These were the ones that came in late, and most of them were assigned to the Barrett Russell that we opened during the that we opened the school year. Okay. For next year, you will see um, this is all new. It looks like the the one I showed you before, but these are things that we would like to um, to introduce this um, for this new registration session. We're going to do newspaper ad. We're going to do different connect ed calls. We're even going to barber shops and hair salons and supermarkets, making sure that we everyone knows that we're registering. Um, there's a registration informational video that it will be put together by Jocelyn Meek, and that's based on the showcases that we have. We already passed out postcards um, to K through five students. 
to parents actually at the um, teacher conferences, parent-teacher conferences. Next week we'll have, actually this Thursday, we'll have six through eight postcards also being passed so that um, parents know. Uh, we are going to contact all churches and religious organizations to make sure that everyone knows that we're registering and we're trying to find a way that we can work together with church churches to make sure that parents also know of the many workshops that are given by the school registration and, and parent engagement office so that um, people can come, okay? And again, same thing with the, um, with the different ways of doing. Um, this will be sent out by the end of the week. This is a um, survey that we have put together just to make sure that we know how many siblings we have and how many to expect, how many students to expect by September. So we're sending this out to all K through eight students and parents um, by the end of the week to make sure that they get back to us with the feedback. If they have a child going into kindergarten, this is a survey that they should fill out to tell us how many students they have that are attending um, Brockton Public Schools at the time, what school and what grade level. So this way we know, for example, for the Baker, we have 50 siblings coming in. For the Huntington, we have 10 siblings coming in. So this way we can include everyone and make sure that we have seats for all. From kindergarten to grade six, they have been promoted. So um, this is the registration that we did back in the month of March. We started registration for um, grade six in January, but letters were sent out um, in March. And since March, we have been registering for grade six. We have an open enrollment policy. So these are the students. and. Um, 1,277 students were registered, and again, 991 of them were minority and 286 non-minority. Um, and you can see that they, they are in different programs, general education, SEI, SPED, TAG, and then the two-way program at the PLUF school. Results of grade six. Once again, you can see that most parents got their first choice, and I have to tell you, this is an incredible feat. We only have, we have six middle schools, six um, middle schools, and then we have two more schools, K through eight schools, the Davis and the Raymond schools. So for us to be able to give the parents their choice, it's an incredible feat because it's a lot of students that request a lot of choices. Again, if you look at the assigned, those were um, students who either make choices very far away from their houses, they didn't have transportation, they couldn't afford transportation, so at, the point, at that time, I had to assign them to a school, and usually the school that it's the closest to their house. High school registrations, a total of 425 high school registrations were done, and you can see by the different programs. We also registered for the B.B. Russell, um, the Champion, Gateway to College, Pathways, Edison Academy, and the Goddard School. Transfers. I said before that there's a lot of transfer, transferring in the city of Brockton, a lot of mobility. Um, these are students that are out of zone, students that for a reason parents choose for example, they live in the south zone, they want to go to the Downey School, that uh, will be, the Downey School is considered a citywide, but if they want to go to the Baker or Brookfield, that would be an out of zone. So parents do do that, but again, they get their placements after everyone else has been pl placed. If we have seats, we grant those seats. Grade six registration, and then um, transfers due to move, other than move, SEI mainstream, tag, and then SPED mainstream, okay? So these are the total registrations done by grade level. Uh, as you can see, kindergarten and grade six, they have the highest numbers. Bilingual and SEI students, um, we registered 539 pre-K through 12 for this school year. That's that's a lot more, 137 more than what we registered for last school year, okay? So like I said in the beginning, they're coming in, okay? I borrowed this from Mr. Pinheiro. This shows 41 years of steady growth in the, uh, for the bilingual students. You can see when they first started the bilingual program here in Brockton in 1972, they started it with 100 students. Today, 
you can look right there. Today we have 3,552 students in the bilingual okay, program. So the bilingual program is 25% of our total enrollment. Um, the results of the whole pre-K through 12 registrations, and this, is, this includes everyone, high school, grade six, kindergarten, everyone. And again, you can see, and I keep saying the same thing, but the first choice, about more than 4,500 students got their first choice. Second choice right here, third choice, and then again, students that were assigned. Summary of a four-year comparison, you can see um, I have them by clusters, preschool, K through five, K six through eight, grades nine through 12, and then our total. And you can see how much we have grown. Brockton is exponential growth. I, I would say, you go from 2010 where we have 15,919 to today that we have more than 1,400 students than we had in 2010. So we are growing every day, every day. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. The question is, on the slide where the, it shows people coming in from Boston, Quincy, Fall River, uh, why do you think that's happening? Are they, are they moving to Brockton? They are people? moving to Brockton, but I, I think it has to do with, with the housing. I think it has to do with the economy. We have a lot of people moving out of Boston, Boston neighborhoods coming to Brockton. And, um, and uh, we also have, again, a lot of people coming from out of their countries to overseas to here. So I think the opportunities that they can find in Brockton. But coming from Boston, for example, it has to do mainly with housing. Well, could you say, for example, at uh, like the high school registration, if somebody's coming from Boston, that Brockton's public schools are much better than Boston schools? You're asking me? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Actually, I ha I, and I'll say of course, and I'll, and I'll um, give you an example. We have people coming from, uh, calling us from Boston public schools that they want to come and visit. Visit our schools and visit our center to, um, to learn from us and what we do. <laughs> And I have to tell you, when it comes to the bilingual program, there's no comparison. You know that the Department of uh, Justice visited Boston, so um, because of what they were not doing. Oh, it's plain but to see we love Brockton. Job. You're doing a fabulous job. It's plain to see. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This is Joyce. Great presentation. Thank you. Always. Uh, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. It really does give a good uh, picture of how our demographics are changing, and they're changing rapidly. And it helps us as a committee as we go forward with our budget process and where, we're, where we need to prioritize our resources. So I thank you for that. It will be a great help to us as we um, go through the ne next budget process. Um, just two quick questions on the ID photos that you take. Um, Every child has a picture in the um, database. in the system in the database. So, does is that different? How does that differ from the IDs that are taken for the for the kids at the high school? I think that would that would be a Mr. Thomas question. <laughs> um, they retake them in the eighth grade, mm -hmm. so they get updated. Um, so usually, when they before they leave the eighth grade, the um, the uh, IT department sends somebody to each middle school top grade you know because obviously when they get to the high school they want a picture that doesn't show them in kindergarten or first right. grade uh, so okay. and then the high school does them um, we'll redo them if the students want them redone so they, each assistant house master's office has the um, ID machines yeah, cause that I'll tell makes you, my, IDs. My, my son looked a lot different in 12th grade yeah. than he did in 8th grade <laughs> but uh, actually my, my questions more centered on a, a, a child that comes to the system in high school so you, you register that child at the registration center. Do you assign the house that they go to, or at what point is it handed over to the high school? 
The high school registration process is, is a two-fold process. Um, when they come to us, the main um, responsibility that SERPIC has is to make sure that all the proofs of residency are in place. Mm -hmm. So we do the first part of the registration. We get the birth certificate. We make sure that the child lives in Brockton, resides in Brockton. And if they bring all the immunizations with them and a certificate of schooling and everything else, we'll take all of that. We'll make copies. We email that to the high school now uh, so that they can. the process is faster. Um, and then the high school is the one. The guidance office is right. the one that will look at the records, will get the, the, the discipline record and all the records from the previous school and then we'll assign the child to a house or okay. to a program. Okay, so there was a handoff at some point yes. in the process. It's actually, I have to tell you, it's done right away. Right now we do have a very good system that is, is, has been put into place. Parents come in the same day we email Brockton High and we have a system that we can check in to see where the folder is. So if parents call, we can say the folder was sent to Miss Anna Carrero. She will give you a call or we'll give her the number to call Anna Carrero. So it has been working very well. Oh, that's great. I'm really impressed with how the whole department has evolved under your Thank leadership. You. And Thank you've you. done a fantastic job. Just one quick question. Um, when you have to assign a, a student, uh, do you ever run into an issue where a student moves into a neighborhood and there are no seats available within walking distance and how do you handle transportation for that student? I face that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and to be completely honest, mm -hmm. for example, I'll use the Huntington School today because my friend Miss Saba is here. Um, children move into the mm -hmm. South Zone, for example, and they live right across from the Huntington. At this time, we don't have seats at the Huntington, mm -hmm. and we only have one kindergarten classroom. So that poses a problem. So what happens is that we have different options. We have the Davis, we have the Kennedy, we have the Gilmore, we have the Barrett now, so we, and the Downey as well. So we can offer parents different choices. Um, for example, the Baker, at this point, we're not assigning anybody to the Baker School. Mm -hmm. So that will leave us with the Downey and the Brookfield. And if parents can transport, then we offer out of zone placements. So we try to work with the parents, trying to make them understand that at this point, we don't have a seat however we do have wait lists okay. so their children's name can be put on the wait list and we do honor those wait lists we go down and once in a while we'll have a parent that will call like what number am I how close are you to calling me yeah. and things like that okay so I still have the question as to um, what you do about transporting a child that you've had to assign to a school. So if the, ch the parent doesn't have the choice to send the child to a neighborhood school where the child can walk, and the child has to take a bus, mm -hmm. do we provide that transportation because it was not an option? Yes, we do if the child lives more than a mile and a half away from the school for mm -hmm. kindergarten and more than two miles for middle school. If the child is within a mile and a half, then we do right. not transport. And that follows our policy. Exactly. Okay. Unless the child goes to the bear at Russell, and then, and then that's the only school that we transport every child okay. to school. Yes. Okay. And so those buses go system wide. Uh, exactly. Um, yeah, five, city five wide, buses yeah. go citywide. Yeah. Citywide. And we do not transport out of the zones. Mm -hmm. So we transport only within the northwest zone, only within the northeast, and so forth and so, so on. You we can don't usually, cross zones. You can usually find a seat for a child within a zone at least. Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, we do. Okay, great. Thank you okay. again. You're welcome. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Soraya. Hey, Mrs. Joyce, you bring up a, a good question, and one of the things that became very evident to us this year, as we took a look at class size and wanted to make sure in kindergarten, grade one, grade two, we set limits on what class sizes were. It became very, very difficult because of the sheer numbers and the seats that we just don't have. So as you look at how quickly we're growing, and you know that we've talked about, again, you know, facility master plan. Uh, I met with Mr. Thomas, uh, you know, Mr. Petronio, and we're going to have, you know, 
sooner than later, meaning within this month we're putting together a small task force to start to move this agenda forward because you know all of this comes together in that it's becoming more and more difficult. One of the things that we started to do was when we set limits on class sizes because of the students that are enrolling after school has begun, we've had to actually increase those class sizes. So we'll be able to report that to you, but, but it is a concern. Well, just to piggyback on that point, um, one of the last slides that um, Soraya presented to us showed you know, an increase from 2010 to now of 1,421 students. Um, as you will recall, Patty, we were on the committee when um, the last new school opened up, which was 2006-2007. Was so, and it, it, it's been that long. Yes. So I mean, so, so we've we've got more than enough kids that would fit in a brand new thousand student school. I mean, so, I mean, that's got to be addressed in the discussions with this task force. We need to open the dialogue with the city council and, and the mayor on the city side um, because, you know, the reality is in the numbers. The numbers aren't lying, you know, and there are only so many seats and if we really care about class size and what it's going to take, especially with the new Common Core and with park testing and all that good stuff, well, our facilities are not ideal for what we're looking at down the road. So that's something that we're all as a committee going to have to deal with and the city side we've got to work together and try to figure out a solution. I mean that's the numbers don't lie. I agree with so. you on that, uh, Mr. Mendichello, and it takes time to build a new school. It doesn't happen overnight. So by waiting, that's just making this situation worse. It's something that we need to address immediately. And we, I'm glad you brought it up, Tom. Mm -hmm. We have short-term goals. We have long-term mm -hmm. goals. Uh, I want you to also know that I'm certainly talking to uh, Liz Barry and, and her team. We're looking at the so-called Burr babies, uh, whether yeah. we look at you know transitional-type kindergarten, and in the meantime, That's so these goal. are things that we are discussing, but the sheer numbers are making it difficult. You know, we look at each other in executive team and we're, we're saying to each other, well, the numbers, you know, Mr. Jerome said to me today, looks like the numbers are stabilizing. You know, can we get through another year before it's a must? Uh, Mr. Thomas is, is looking at, you know, modular classrooms, things that mm -hmm. we've discussed in, in the past couple of school committee meetings. So it's very much on our front burner and hopefully will alleviate some of the, the difficulties, and not difficulties, as Soraya showed you, in the end, you know, many parents got their first choice. Mm -hmm. um, interesting enough, when we opened the Barrett Russell and the people were assigned there, that became the last school that we mm -hmm. assigned. You know, and many of you have gone to visit the Barrett Russell. It is a happy, wonderful place. You know, it's all about what a kindergarten center can be, all of the resources, uh, children of the same age, and it's been wonderful. And I had mentioned to Soraya when we spoke last week, you know, are you getting any complaints? And I think, Soraya, you told me there were zero complaints. Mm -hmm. So nobody's tried to move their children out, and uh, it's, it's actually been very successful. Thank goodness, and thank you to everybody to make, who made that happen for us. Great. Anyone else? Okay. Um, items to refer to subcommittee? Can I give a couple of updates first? Absolutely. Thank you. Sure. I do want to update uh, the school committee on uh, the park field testing. And I know when we originally talked to you when information came to us from the DESE and, and it changes every time we speak. We originally were told that 18 of our schools were selected, uh, some for performance-based assessments, some for end-of-the-year assessments. Um, we started to prepare for that. There was a lot of rumbling about preparing for it in such a short amount of time when you're talking infusing technology. We were actually given an option uh, about a month or so ago that a district could select, instead of having this at 18 schools throughout the district, we could select to have it concentrated in in one or two or, or however many the uh, random selection would be. We opted to do that and our option to do that was because we could focus not only technology resources but support from the district to those schools that would be experiencing the park field testing in the spring. And this is going on all over you know, the Commonwealth. Um, so we opted for that. We just got news back about a week ago 
that two of our schools were selected along with Brockton High, which we obviously didn't have a choice there. So there will be three schools selected. I did have the opportunity to bring the principals in yesterday to let them know that their school was selected. Um, I would like to be able to let the teachers, the principals will be letting the teachers know. We will have that to you on Friday in your informational bulletin. We'll be preparing to tell parents. We're actually very excited about the schools that will field test Park for us. We're working with Dan Vigent. Those schools will be given the technology. Those children will have those resources right away. And again, as a district, we'll be, able, we'll be able to field test. We will not be getting any results. And we also have opted for those children that will be taking the uh, Park field testing performance-based assessments in English language arts and math, that they will also be taking the MCAS. With Park field testing, we're not getting back any results. No accountability. And we felt it was important for those students, because no determinations have been made yet on accountability, that we had that information for parents and for the school system. So I'll have more information for you, but I did want you to know I've alerted the two principals, and I will let you know as soon as the teachers at the schools know, and we'll be preparing to inform the community and the parents. Sure. If we're not getting any results, how do we utilize um, information derived from the process then? We won't be getting any student results. We will obviously as a district be able to see how the students performed, uh, some of the things that we might need to do differently. Um, we'll be able to compare it to MCAS, but we, we absolutely will get... Will we get um, like... Will we get the, how a school performed as we, a whole? We will get no results on this. Okay, this, so is, this is clearly a, a so field So how do you testing. know how you did? We don't, which is why... So how was, do you know how, what to improve? Well, what, what's happening is Pearson and the state is able to see if this is the test that they want to adopt. This will okay. be a decision in the next couple of years. They're rolling out field testing over two years, so I believe. This is really for the state to utilize. Oh, yes, it, it is. It really doesn't help us district-wise at all. To the degree of how we're going to perform on the test, it, it will help us with what we need for you know technology, what we need for an infrastructure. Correct. You that know, is exactly resources what we'll gain more than that. anything. Yes. Okay. And we did not have a choice on this. I should let people know that we did not have a choice. You know, this is throughout the state. Mm -hmm. uh, school districts uh, were selected. Classes were selected. Um, and as I said, we, we felt the option that we chose was better for our district. At did this we time. select the schools? We could not. Okay. We could not select the schools. We could select which method we wanted to go with, or which, which choice. Yes. But they selected the schools. And, and that came. Do you know what criteria the state used? That came around at the last minute. You know, when, when it mm -hmm. first came out to us, I think 18 sites were selected. Um, we actually uh, could have rejected, I think, some of the classes that were selected. We had to have certain reasons. Mm -hmm. If we did that, uh, there was a lot of talk among the superintendents, especially urban superintendents that they felt it was too much in sh too short of a time to get ready. And that's when the discussion came up, I want to say the beginning of November, in having a third option, okay. which was to say we wanted to concentrate. We still had to have the same number of students tested in classes, but to concentrate it in particular schools. Is there a concern at all about test burnout in those two particular schools because they have to take both um, assessments and if it will have a negative impact which will they which will they take first do we know yet sometimes they're even going on and I see Liz Barry there but sometimes they're going on at that we do have calendars mm -hmm. that we've given out there will be times where there possibly could be some overlap mm -hmm. one of the things we have made very clear and we will share this with parents um, we've made very clear that what's important to us is the MCAS testing that's our accountability that's what our children are prepared for that's you know our framework that the children are preparing for. Uh, at this point here, again, Park is something we're excited to have the students perform with the technology to see what this test will be about. But our focus right now is MCAS. Yeah. And that will remain the same. 
Yeah, I'm just really concerned about at some point these kids are just going to be testing so much in the spring, and you know, um, we hope we hope. How to, does that negatively? We hope. To, I'm afraid of yeah. it possibly negatively yeah. impacting their learning process. We will keep it. When you heard me say the district will have all supports there, so we will have extra personnel. We'll make sure that the teachers are supported. You know, we'll make sure that every opportunity to make sure the children are understanding the process and mm -hmm. you know certainly not having burnout. Uh, is, is something that is a priority mm. for us. Obviously, we don't have a choice, so we have to do it. But hopefully, we can put things in place as you've just, you know. Um, and, and the principals explained. were excited, you know, to be told that you're going to be infused with technology for your teachers, for your students, starting, you know, very soon. So they they, they left with smiles. Um, as mm -hmm. I said, I'm looking forward to sharing this information with all of you and with the community. Um, and we're go going to continue in, in a positive way with everyone else in the state. One step at a time. It is. It's what okay. it feels like right now. Thank you for the update. Thank you. Tony. Attorney Smith, thank you. Um, with respect to the test itself, do we have any sense of the content at this point, the park? Well, it'll be based on certainly, did you want to come up? Well, yeah. It'll be based on, you know, Common Core, you know, English language arts and math. Mm -hmm. The things that we have a little bit of concern about, I, I think some of, in, in working with the technology, there are some skills that the students from, you know, certainly gra it's grades three to eight in our two schools that are selected. So we actually have been working on um, exactly that. Um, right now, the park um, folks are releasing what they call park prototypes, which gives us an indication of what the questions actually look like mm -hmm. and as we referenced before in other meetings um, they've been slowly releasing those and we've been able to work on our own assessments so that the first experiences that kids have with these types of questions um, it's not going to be for park um, some of the common assessments that we do as a district are more park like um, because we don't want that first encounter with technology to be when they're taking the test and also those types of questions um, they have to have some experience in some context because it because it is different hmm. but uh, I guess my question ultimately is how will we be able to use the data because I mean that's one of the upsides of it too is that we, a way to sort of assess how our kids do on the um, MCAS versus the park. Uh, and as Superintendent Smith we will, said, we will not have any student data with this field test. Yeah. By concentrating it at two sites, um, that's one opportunity, maybe I'll call it that, where we'll learn from actually administering the test, talking to students and teachers anecdotally, which if we spread it out across the district, we wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so the kind of data that we get will really be about the test administration and not about how kids did. We will not get hard data from that. Mm -hmm. And someone asked a question about how were the schools chosen. Um, Pearson is the company that um, received the contract to actually do um, pa the park testing. Um, Pearson um, is actually responsible for um, determining which schools um, engage in the test. It's, it's not even a, um, a Department of Elementary and Secondary Education right. choice. It's, it's with Pearson. And to be perfectly honest, it's about them getting um, a robust sample, I think they called it, um, for this field test. Yes. So, okay, so they're not sharing there. <laughs> kind of like a charter school, isn't it? <laughs> All right, thank you. I don't think I'd be able to understand it anyway, but, but they're not, no, they're not telling us the, the methodology behind they, that. They must have a blue ribbon panel of economists, <laughs> judges, and lay people. We'll come up with their, uh, they, they came up with their decision, but thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? <clears throat> thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Mrs. Barry, you could stay there if you like. <laughs> I'd rather not. Don't go far. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to give you a couple of other updates. Um, as far as the superintendent's transition plan, things are finally coming to an end. And when I say finally, I had my uh, second uh, Youth Voices meeting yesterday with students in Brockton High. Amaze me every time I speak to them. Uh, as I've told you the, before, the questions are thoughtful. Uh, it really will inform my transition planning. Uh, going forward, uh, I'm actually meeting this weekend with the transition team. And what will happen from this meeting on Saturday is we'll start the entry plan which is the story of our district we'll move into a vision and a mission statement that is going to be known widely in the district and have input from you know from many different people to, to come up with our vision and mission and our strategic plan hopefully I'll be able to present that to you sometime February and March uh, going forward so I'm, I'm very excited to bring things to an end I think my last group of meetings is December 19th I'm meeting with city councilors a number of other groups that were with the finishing touches to to finishing up um, a, a long experience a long fall uh, moving into winter but it's been very very valuable I also had an opportunity last Tuesday night to meet with uh, new teachers we called it a new teacher forum it was a small group I had 10 new teachers of course right before the Thanksgiving holiday I had to cancel an earlier one uh, in the fall because of a conflict with the mentoring program but I can't tell you I sat there with uh, our executive director of HR uh, Dr. Moran uh, Elizabeth Barry uh, Jocelyn Meek and it was a great dialogue a lot of useful information and the one thing that I want you to hear it was interesting to hear the new teachers say I've always wanted to teach in Brockton I've tried so hard to get a job in Brockton that was my focus it was the place to be it had a good reputation there were things that they shared with us that we need to do better uh, and we'll look at that from the process uh, of recruitment or you know applications to um, you know they loved the new teacher orientation they loved seeing our city so whoever came up with the bus tours it, it was a big success with our new teachers they were able to see schools throughout the district had an idea about Brockton um, we talked a lot about uh, new teacher uh, coming up with with plans for new teachers throughout their first second and third year and that'll be something we'll take a look at in our contract negotiations coming up with the Brockton Education Association so again an excellent opportunity to receive that feedback and I also want to inform you that our organizational chart, uh, the first round of the job ads will be going out this week. I finalized those with the executive team. Uh, some of them are our jobs that we've just made minor changes to others will uh, be advertised in the district I hope to, hope to have all of them out uh, by the end of December I've talked with Deputy Superintendent John Jerome who's going to work very closely with me uh, you know with uh, getting the job ads out taking a look at the interview process uh, transitioning some of our new members that will be coming on board and uh, Mr. Jerome will be again working with me uh, throughout the next few months to uh, to make sure this transition is smooth Wonderful. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anything to refer to subcommittees? We have no. next Tuesday night. Yeah, we do have a finances and curriculum. Mm -hmm. So that'll notification. We have a, a subcommittee meeting um, for next week, Tuesday. We last meeting we opted for that, yeah. and um, Wanda will be getting that out in the Friday night packet. The on that, I don't know. Do we? Time or and place. No. Okay. But it, it, it'll be the usual. 7, 7 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Can people get there at 6.30 or do they prefer 7 p.m.? 6.30 or earlier than that? Great. All right, great. why don't we try 6 o'clock then. Excellent. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Uh, any unfinished business? Lots. Lots of unfinished business. Um, A reminder about the uh, next school committee meeting is early. I believe we're starting at 6. 
Yes, and we were going to send out notification of that. So, yep, just a reminder to the public, uh, normally our school committee meetings are at 7 o'clock, but we're going to publish that it's going to be 6 o'clock um, due to the uh, concert over at the high school. We were going to try to have the meeting uh, wrap up in time to attend the concert. And that's usually a wonderful experience, so I would invite the public or anyone uh, interested for a good night of great music to come and attend that event. It's one of the best all year round. Yeah. Good. Um, any new business? Mr. Sullivan. I'm not even sure. This is new business. Or I'm just asking for two minutes to speak if I could. What are you going to speak about, Mr. Sullivan? You're getting say me goodbye. nervous here. No, I'm just going to say goodbye. Oh, it's, well, it's the not the last is, meeting. Right. This is the last meeting. Well, I can make the 10th, December 10th, but I can't okay. make the 17th. All right, well, all right. So it's the on. last regular school. Mr. Meeting. Sullivan, the floor is yours. <laughs> and I was thinking that this f the four years that I've been here seems like four months. You know, it's gone by so quick. And Superintendent Smith, I'm glad to meet you. I'm glad to be a part of it. To put you in office, it was a, it was an excellent experience for everybody. And I just wanted to give a, a special thanks to Tom Minicello. Tom, you taught me almost everything that I know on the school committee. You're an excellent teacher. I didn't expect that, Sully. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you to everybody, including Jessica, Patty, and Tony, and Wanda, and Andy, and the two guys down here, Bill Carpenter and uh, Mike Haley. I'm sure everybody knows he's sick right now. But uh, I wanted to thank everybody for putting up with me with my stupid questions sometimes. Oh, they're not stupid questions. Uh, I wanted to thank the administration, John Jerome, Mike Thomas, Sal. There's a ton, I'm probably going to miss a ton of people, but I can't think of the names right now. <laughs> but it was an excellent, excellent experience. And I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you. And you know, Mr. Sullivan, the one thing that I'll say about you is it didn't matter who came up there to speak. Every one of the, again, Brockton Public School employees, staff members, you made everybody feel terrific about the job they were doing and the efforts that they put in. So on behalf of everybody, you know, I want to say thank you to you, you know, for your time. We usually would have done this at the last meeting, but um, I didn't realize you wouldn't be there. So again, well, on the, behalf of everybody, thank you. I just you. want to tell you, the, the normal, I mean, the regular reason is I'm going on vacation. Lucky for 12. you. <laughs> and I, I go down to Florida for Christmas every single. I've been doing it for the last ten years. This is nothing new. Right. I'm, just, I'm not trying to sneak away. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I'm leaving the 12th, and the meeting yeah. wasn't even decided to last meeting. It was going to be the 17th. Yeah. I don't know if people realize the time that school committee members put in. Not just the time that you're seeing them here, you know, performing and representing you. But they're also there, again, for subcommittees. You heard us talk. We've had subcommittees every Tuesday night, uh, certainly since I've come on board. I, I know you spent lots of hours in that. You've had negotiations. Yep. You've been at the central office sometimes two and three nights uh, every week. It's a real commitment. And again, on behalf of everybody, you know, I want to thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Tim Sullivan's been a pleasure to serve with. I mean, you have been, um, you have the, one of the biggest hearts I know. You put the kids first, you always have. The Raymond School, when they wanted to close that school, <laughs> Sully, you fought the good fight and you kept that school open for those kids. And no one can ever say that you didn't put kids first. Glad to hear it, Tom. Thanks, Sully. Good job. Um, on a happy note, another happy note, our friend Dave Gorman is having the Jingle Bell Run Saturday over at the um, at Christos 2, the Massasoit Conference Center. So he told me to invite everyone in, in the city to come. It's always a great event. It's going to be held at 1 o'clock. Registration is... Um, between 12 and 1. You try to get there a little early and register. Um, it's a great event, as everyone knows. It's, it's a charity, uh, charitable event where you make a little donation and it goes to a great cause, you know, providing some gifts for kids that are needy. And um, 
it's always it's always a load of fun they serve a nice little pizza lunch um, and that's donated by all sorts of sponsors throughout the city um, it's it's just an upbeat great event so if you feel like coming out getting a little exercise going for a little walk the course isn't that bad if you run if you walk you can do whatever you want but um, um, if you have any type of a, a, a holiday outfit there's always tons of people that dress up there's the Grinch is usually there Santa's usually there people are in you know goofy reindeer hats or whatever you have bring it um, it's just a great day so um, Dave told me to invite everyone and um, please attend if you can just the money go to helping hands or yes yes so mm -hmm. wonderful event anyone else have anything no? All right. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Thank you for attending. Mm -hmm. Thank you.